Come along on the trip we took to celebrate our anniversary to one of the top state parks in the U.S., Skidaway Island in Savannah, Georgia. The Google lady took us through downtown Jacksonville to the eastern start of I-10, which has been under construction for years, and then up I-95, where we made our usual stop at the Georgia Welcome Center parking lot. Well, we're at the Georgia Welcome Center again. This was our first trip towing a car. I'm guessing it impacted gas mileage, but since we don't know how many miles per gallon we get anyway. We've been to Savannah several times, but never camping in our RV. So we picked Skidway Island State Park for our wedding anniversary trip. Georgia has a lot of great state parks on rivers, lakes, and in the mountains. Florida and Georgia both have an abundance of places to visit. I am following Joe, who's um, driving our little car to the campground our brakes are a little bit low on the back of that car. Skidaway Island State Park has 87 RV sites, most of which were empty when we were there. There are a number of really nice hiking trails that let you really see the park, and most are bike friendly. In December, the average low temperature is 40 degrees with the high of 63. We're at Skidaway Island State Park on the sandpaper Sandpiper Trail and the Avion Loop Trail intersection. It's just really cool. There's um, a lot of palm trees and the big oaks covered with Spanish moss. Actually, there's a pine tree with Spanish moss. You don't see that very often. Rhonda, what? why don't you walk right through the middle? There's a big mud puddle. This is nice, we are here in mid-December. It's nice and cool, but if you were here in the summertime, God, there'd be so many bugs. Savannah is a very historic city founded by General James Oglethorpe in 1733. His mission, as authorized by the King of England, was to establish a defense against the Spanish in St. Augustine, Florida. He established forts on Skidaway Island with its rich marshes filled with oysters, mussels, and clams, had long been a fishing, hunting, and ceremonial ground for the Tamuqua Indians that lived in the area. Savannah and Skidaway Island were both involved in the Revolutionary and Civil Wars. Between the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, the area was a plantation slave economy. After the Civil War, black freedmen farmed most of the land. There was a school run by Benedictine monks for the farmer's children, which was unusual. We just came out onto the river. We got markers out here, so. Who knows? Beach? Yeah. By the 1890s, Skidaway was abandoned until after alcohol prohibition, when the island became a haven for moonshiners and smugglers. Later, most of the island was purchased for pulpwood by Union Bag and Paper Company. The first bridge to the island was not built until 1971. This is a liquor steel site. During the 1930s, this hole contained one of the 31 liquor seals sites on park property. This is located on the Sandpiper Trail Loop. So, moonshiners, breaking the law. Yeah, the intercoastal's not too far over there, so if you would have had a boat come in, you could walk in through a trail right here and yeah. Rhonda, what time is it? 10.15. 10 10 Just getting ready for the morning. Nice, a nice, leisurely yeah. morning. Yep. But that's how we roll. How we We're roll. tough campers, hardcore. <laughs>
Skidway Island State Park was voted one of the top state park campgrounds in the country in both 2017 and 2018 by Campendium, where it has 35 reviews with 5 stars. It has decent 4G data with Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. It is about a 20-minute drive into Savannah and has several historic sites nearby, including Wormslow State Historic Park, and the Pinpoint Heritage Museum, which sounded interesting, but we didn't get a chance to visit. We're on a little observation tower on one of the trails here at Skidaway Island. Yeah, it looked like you could go higher. Okay, we're on Skidaway Island, we're doing one of these trails, and these roots are something. So the GoPro's got really good stabilization. I'm wondering how oh. that's going to work on these roots, because they're bumpy. Or the earthworks. I don't know that there's really all that much here to see. I don't know if you were shooting a mortar from here way out there to where the open water is. That's a pretty far shot. They're not quite plantation homes, but That looks like the bottom of a jug. This area is home to more than 300 species of birds. Skidaway Island is at the north end of the Georgia Colonial Coast Birding Trail. The Creek Indians called the Georgia Coast the Enchanted Land for good reason. When you visit, take some time, just chill out and watch the birds. You'll be glad you did. This being the first time we had our car with us on an RV trip, we had to drive into Savannah for a short visit. The riverfront is very nice to walk around. The city has a number of very cool squares or parks and really caters to tourists. Check out some of the Savannah College of Art and Design campus. They're really the heart of Savannah in my mind. This city was one of the few in the South that treated the local Indian population pretty well in the early days. And there still are a number of statues in some of the squares and various places around the city celebrating that heritage. You cold, huh? It's cold. historic riverfront all these old buildings along the riverfront are remodeled they're all mostly restaurants bars tourist stores but this is cool all the steps well right there historic steps abuse you at your own risk <laughs> Georgia Hushers 1736, huh? To protect a colony from the Spanish. As a mead maker, I enjoyed our visit to the Savannah Bee Company to see their mead tasting menu. They have some pretty good choices. Then we went to lunch at Paula Dean's Creek House for some great seafood. Parking ripoff. If you use a credit card, it's a minimum of two hours, so four dollars to park. And it's cold, and we're not going to be here. It's very cold. Rhonda's not going to be out here 15 minutes. <laughs> Let 
Luckily, the parking pass we bought at the beach worked at the Lighthouse Museum area. But on Tuesdays, the day we were there, is the one day of the week they are closed. So we didn't get to walk the 178 steps to the top of the lighthouse. Really sad about that. It's Georgia's oldest lighthouse, first built in 1736. The site also includes part of Fort Shreven, built for the Spanish-American War. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to follow our adventures.